For an Argentinian who grew up obsessing over New York, it's mind-blowing to me that we got to build our LinkedIn studios and none other than the iconic Empire State Building. We've been here since 2017. That's crazy, right? Come on, let me show you. I love that I get to call this building my second home. In this studio, we got to meet some of the biggest names in business and entertainment. Come on in. Right here, we met with writer-director Patty Jenkins and Judd Apatow, two people I've been particularly inspired by. Judd produced Trainwreck, 40-Year-Old Virgin, Bridesmaids, Anchorman, Bros, and his career advice is so simple, it's hard to forget. Generally, I tell people, don't be a dick. I mean, that's the simplest thing, which is if people don't want you in the room, it's all over already. And you learn that in punch-up rooms at sitcoms, because there's 10 people around a table, line by line, going through scripts, and there's always one person you're like, I wish I could remove that person from the room. I, I cannot be in this room, because that person's in the room. And that person usually does disappear. And, and so that is the first lesson. Don't be that guy. Don't be what we call a room killer. And I do think that you should uh, overproduce and you want to be the person that it's fun to be with. And in comedy, we talk a lot about people who criticize but don't pitch fixes. That's always a problem. You hate the person that tells you what's wrong without then pitching, what if we did this, what, what if we did that? I don't know if I'm right. But all I have is my opinion. So I might fight to the death on something and then just be proven completely wrong. And what I realized was that it's, it's not, the issue isn't so much about taking notes or not taking notes, although that is a big part of it. It's who do you decide to partner with? Who do you decide to work for? When I was in my early 20s, I got a job writing jokes for the Grammys for Gary and I didn't know Gary. I just had met him briefly, and so I tried to write just an enormous amount of jokes. I just thought I need to make myself indispensable. And that's advice I always give to people. You just want to be the person they can't get rid of because you're overproducing. And as a result of that, he took me to New York when he hosted. I wasn't just someone sending in jokes. He said, why don't you be there? And I was on stage feeding him jokes during the show, and you know, Jack Nicholson was on the show, and. Bono and Bob Dylan and Sinatra was the greatest thing that ever happened in, in, in my life. Some people say to me, how do you direct? I say, I don't know, just say you're a director. You are now a director. You said it, you're a director. I mean, you're, what, what, what's a producer? Just say, I'm a producer. I'm producing this. Just, I'm attached to this. I have this idea, it's me. Yeah, I'm the producer. And then people go, okay. Patty Jenkins is one of the most successful directors in Hollywood. Not only did she win an Oscar for Monster, which she wrote and directed, her film Wonder Woman is one of the highest grossing superhero movies ever. She focuses her advice on the importance of perseverance. When I was a PA, which is production assistant in film, right out of college in 94, I ended up getting a chance to meet a camera crew who did very high-end commercials. And they were very skeptical of me and they said, sure, you can work for us if you're gonna work for free for six months and you have to memorize absolutely everything about cameras. You have to be here three hours early, you have to take part of a lens, wanna know the flange, focal distance of every camera. And so I came into this industry thinking, wow, that's the way it goes. So I'm so grateful now to that training because for the first nine years of my career working as a camera person, I thought that's where how it had to be done. You have to be, you cannot fail, it has to be tack on. I have carried that over to my directing career, where it's like, gotta be there before call, an hour before call, at least, and so that you can see what's happening and you have to be prepared and all of those things. Hollywood, or success in this industry in particular, is like a brick wall, and like holes will pop through and then they close back up. And so you have to find your own hole. I think that it's literally perseverance and passion, but perseverance first and foremost. I've, I've, I have, passed in on in the d journey to get to being a director um so many people who were very talented extremely talented who who d changed their mind or didn't want to do it or didn't want to or you know gave up or any number of things and i feel like the ones that i have watched who have made it a lot of us have just kept trying 
and been tenacious about continuing to try. So I think it's like looking for any opening. My opening was so unusual and so many of them are. You know, I got through a B-movie backdoor where nobody was interested in me or my career or what I wanted to do, but I, um, but they were making straight to video serial killer movies and I happened to be a true crime buff. But you never know. So you never know. Any, any of those things can work. My advice is in all cases, being playing defense to thinking that you can parlay this, always eyes on the prize to a great film. You know, and by the way, I don't come from a, a privileged background either. So I was waiting tables at the same time. So I'm not, it's not advice I give that's, uh, that is, is saying that you have to be able to afford to not work. You, finding a way to offer yourself for the time. So I took weekend shifts because those commercials and music videos were happening during the week. And then I would only take the ones that I could do and just only work super hard on the weekend. So it's like, whatever you whatever you can do to, to find a way to get the training. And it definitely helped. My my assistant before this, he came up to me and dedicated, He at, I was speaking at his college, Loyola Marymount, and he said, I wanna work for you. I had just had a baby and said, I don't need it. And he said, I'm, I'm gonna work for you for free. I was like, I really don't. He was like, I'm going to. He was with me for eight years. And now he co-produced the show. So it's like, it's, it's it, it, it's getting that training and getting your getting what you need in whatever way you need to. Now I want to hear from you. What's the best advice you've ever received? Leave your comments. And for more advice from other leaders and change makers, subscribe to my best advice newsletter on LinkedIn.